for this recorded service from North Caledonian United Church. We gather today to create the service for March 20th, the third Sunday in Lent. Participating in today's service is Joanne, our musician, Carol, our reader and candle lighter, Donna and Gay, our assisting and leading the responses, Wilma, our videographer, Heinz, our sound technician, and I'm Reverend Don Johnson. This day and for the days to come, we keep in our hearts and in our prayers the people of Ukraine in this time of grief and loss. As we begin, we acknowledge that we meet in Treaty One land, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, and Dakota peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are thankful for these first inhabitants, and we commit to working together towards justice, truth, and reconciliation. And we move now to the lighting of the Christ candle. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O God, the fountain of life, to a humanity parched with thirst, you offer the living water of grace, which springs up from the rock, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant your people the gift of your Spirit, that we may learn to profess our faith with courage and announce with joy the wonder of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Hear now the word of God. Today's reading is Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 9. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you, have no, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. And see, you shall call all nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run, for, run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. 
Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that they may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Today's responsive reading is Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. You are my God. I long for you from early, from early morning. My whole being, being desires your, you like a dry, worn, waterless land. My soul thirsts for you. In the sanctuary, let me see how mighty are your works. For your constant love is better than the light itself. And so I will praise you. I will give thanks as long as I live. I raise my hands in prayer. My soul will feast and be filled. And I will sing your praise you. As I lie in bed, I remember you, O God. I think of you all night long, for you are my constant help. In the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. I cling to you. Your hands keep you safe. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish, just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on the fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig round it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. It was in 1970 when Joni Mitchell released her hit song, Big Yellow Taxi. Just to jog your memory, it begins this way. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot with a pink hotel, a boutique, and a swinging hot spot. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. That line came to mind a few days ago when I discovered that there was a water main break on my street and my water was cut off. At first, I worried if the line from the street to my home was broken, which has happened before at this time of year, at somewhat considerable cost to repair. A check with my neighbor confirmed that the break was somewhere on the street. By the afternoon, a, a bit of water trickled through the faucet, a, a trickle that was increased to a decent flow, and then suddenly nothing. The knock at the door at 11 o'clock that night told me that a temporary water tank was on the street. 
The next day was dry, except for a, a short teasing time when a trickle flowed through the pipes. Then it stopped. And finally, at 11.15 this morning, the water was back on. So much for going to plan B, which was to shower at someone else's place. You don't know what you've got till it's gone, Joni wisely sang. It feels so good to have the water line repaired and, and I'll go back to taking water for granted. But when you don't have water, it sure disrupts life. The funny coincidence with this is that the day before the water disruption, I had chosen the Isaiah passage and the song for this service, both of which are full of thirst and water references. Little did I know that I would be experiencing firsthand what it means to be without water. Of course, my troubles are, are nothing compared to what others are experiencing around the world. Day by day, we are seeing the, the turmoil and destruction Ukraine is, endure, is enduring. We grieve with them as they suffer through this totally unprovoked and senseless war. And with them, we hope and pray that this conflict will come to a speedy end. Around the world, in North America as well as the other continents, Water security and water safety and water availability are serious concerns. Those concerns are the realities of daily life for many in our province, as they have to boil or bring in any water they want to drink. And as we all know, water is essential to our very existence. In our responsive reading, the psalmist speaks of a lack of water as a way of understanding our spiritual thirst. You can almost picture the psalmist putting his or her longing for God into this most basic of human experiences, thirst. You are my God. I long for you from early morning. My whole being desires you like a dry, warm, waterless land. My soul thirsts for you. For the psalmist, the presence of God in the soul is as essential as the presence of water in our life. We cannot live without water and we cannot truly live without the love of God in our spiritual life. These past two years of pandemic restrictions, of distancing and mask wearing, of, of isolation and living in fear, these have been for many of us like existing in a dry, worn, waterless land. Sure, we, we try to be distracted with Netflix and amusing emails, we shopped in the cool of the evening when few others would be at the grocery store. We dutifully observed the health regulations. And we worried. We worried about those we love. And during those times in the past two years, when we were able to worship in person, limited though we were by masking and distancing and no singing, still it was like water for a thirsty soul when we could come to church and be with others in offering our praise and thanks to God. So we hope and pray that these two years of wilderness wandering, of sojourning in that dry, warren, waterless land which the virus created, that all that is finally over and done with. It may be too soon to look back and think much about the past two years, to reflect on, on what was positive as well as what was negative, to be grateful for the friendships deepened and new friendships that were made, for experiences of kindness and compassion we received 
and that in turn we extend it to others. To think of generosity of spirit given by us and given to us, of appreciating, perhaps for the first time, those people and groups and activities which enrich us and which bless our lives. What was it that Johnny wrote? You don't know what you've got till it's gone. We may just discover that much of what we feared was gone is not actually gone, merely put away for a season or two. People say that we have been changed by this pandemic, that things will not be the same again. To some degree, that may well be true. But to be honest, perhaps some things probably needed to be changed, as well as some attitudes changed. Before the pandemic, for instance, it was easy to take church for granted, as something to go to if it was convenient and fit into our overall plans for the weekend. And if not this Sunday, well, there's always next Sunday when we can go, isn't there? Then came the times when that choice was taken from us. It remains to be seen how church life has been affected by the pandemic. William Willimon, a retired United Methodist Bishop, talks of the effect 9-11 had on American church attendance. He said that following the airplane attacks in New York, vast numbers of Americans started going back to church. Apparently that surge in attendance lasted about six months, and then the numbers gradually fell down to what they had been before 9-11. Why was this so, he wondered. Bishop Willeman said it was because these people who returned to church after so many years away found the church to be the same boring, predictable institution that they had left all those years before. So there was really no attraction. It remains to be seen how the church, our church, and all the other churches will evolve in the years to come. But we do know a few things for sure. The church is made up of people People who like each other, and more importantly, through their shared love of God. People who love each other, warts and all, as they say. It's hard, if not impossible, to replace with something else the friendly interactions churchgoers have when it's time to gather for worship. Yes, the services can be recorded, and with extensive financial and time investment, the worship experience, quote-unquote, can be presented as a, a high-tech professional production, able to be viewed whenever it's convenient. But the church is about community. It is about sharing and visiting and encouraging one another. It is about friends who regard others as sisters and brothers in faith. It is a collection of pilgrims in their lifelong walk with God, people who need to gather together. How thirsty we felt inside ourselves when we couldn't worship together how we wanted to see our church family, to be with our church family, to hear their news and share their joys and sorrows. Yes, we can encounter the divine most anywhere, but us Christian folk especially encounter God in our houses of worship, those sanctuaries blessed by the prayers and tears and laughter and singing and sharing down through the years. Places that we treat with respect, places that we hold in our hearts as holy.
we would echo the words of the psalmist. In the sanctuary, let me see how mighty are your works. Your constant love is better than life itself, and so I will praise you. I will give thanks as long as I live. I raise my hands in prayer. My soul will feast and be filled, and I will sing and praise you. As I lie in bed, I remember you, O oh God. I think of you all night long, for you are my constant help. In the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. I cling to you. Your hand keeps me safe. What was it that Joni Mitchell sang all those years ago? You don't know what you've got till it's gone. Friends, I suspect we well know what we have here at North Kildare United Church, and we aren't letting it go. Amen. Let us pray. God of generous provision, we are grateful for the many ways you care for us and provide for the needs of your people. In word, water, bread, and wine, you nourish and sustain us. When we listen to you, we encounter delight, and when we come to you, we live most fully. Sometimes, though, we find ourselves in a dry and weary land where we have misused and depleted creation. Drought and famine leave people and animals facing hunger and starvation, where we have polluted streams, rivers, and oceans. Fish and other water creatures suffer and die. People without access to clean water become sick. O oh God, Help us to care for your creation in ways that make it possible for all to have enough food and water, life verdant and abundant. Sometimes we find ourselves in a dry and weary land, in Ukraine and in other places torn apart by war, where the earth itself has been ravaged, where hospitals and homes and corner stores have been reduced to rubble where human lives have been destroyed and deformed, where peace lies in the ruins and hope is buried. O oh God, raise peace among us again. Build hope up from the ground. 
Restore in us and in the world's leaders the will and determination to make an end of war and a new beginning for justice. Sometimes we find ourselves in a dry and weary land. When we are lost, unable to find our way to a place that is home for us, when we are sad and weighed down with regret or grief, when we are tired or sick in body, mind or spirit. O oh God, provide water in the desert and manna in the wilderness, enough to sustain us for one more day, even enough to revive us for the long haul. Sometimes we find ourselves in the rich feast of your presence. We celebrate a new beginning in our lives, a new job, a new relationship, a new life, a new day of sobriety, a second chance. O oh God, we give thanks to you for this new blessing in our lives. Sometimes we find ourselves in the rich feast of your presence. We give thanks for the gift of healing after injury or illness, for laughter that bubbles up to replace our tears, for hope that spills its soothing love, light over the darkness of our despair. O oh God, we thank you for the gift of wholeness and resurrection promised to us in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we find ourselves in the rich feast of your presence. We enjoy the relief of forgiveness given and received. We enjoy a breach in walls of division. Our own hearts are enlarged and our own vision is broadened by new understanding. We welcome a prodigal home or are ourselves welcomed home again. O God, we thank you that you are reconciling all things in heaven and on earth. Be patient with us, we pray, in the varied landscapes of our lives. Make us patient with one another and even with ourselves. Do your good work within us, among us, and beyond us, too, until our lives and all of creation come fully into your realm. You who so generously provide deserve our praise, our grateful praise. In Jesus' name we pray, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let us offer together this final prayer for them. Lord, Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, Open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. May the Lord bless you and guard you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace.